associated with the thyroid. So first, what is the thyroid? It is a very small organ located at the front of your neck. It's butterfly shaped and it produces hormones that regulate body temperature, growth, brain and lung development, and even your heart rate. So the thyroid is necessary at all stages of life. In children, it's necessary for bone growth and maturation. And in adults, it's actually necessary for metabolism. So what regulates thyroid hormone production? The hypothalamus, a small gland in the brain, releases a hormone called thyrotropin releasing hormone, or TRH, and that acts on another gland called the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland then releases thyroid stimulating hormone, or TSH, which acts on the thyroid. The thyroid is then prompted to release hormones called T3 and T4, with T3 being the more active of the two hormones. The T3 and T4 then carry thyroid hormone throughout the body to other organs such as the brain, heart, and lungs. And iodine is an essential part of this process as thyroid hormone cannot be created within the thyroid without iodine. So we'll talk a little bit later about what happens when you don't have enough iodine in your diet. Let's see. So first, what happens when the thyroid is not working properly? So the thyroid hormone travels in the body to exert its effects on like the heart, your vessels, your brain, even your digestive system. So some, ten, some telltale signs of what might possibly be a dysfunctional thyroid are when you're noticing like your heart's contracting more. So your, your heart rate is picking up, you know, and you're not sure why. Or, you're putting on extra weight, you know, you have an increased appetite, or you might even have a decreased appetite, you're eating less, and you are still putting on weight, you can't explain why. You, you have anxiety, or you can't tolerate heat or cold the way you once could. Um, so there's a lot of different disorders that can happen when the thyroid is not functioning properly. It is literally, it is linked up to every other organ system in the body. So I wanna talk very quickly about goiters. Um, we've all probably all seen one at one point. A goiter is a large growth located on the thyroid gland that can result due to low iodine levels or inflammation of the thyroid itself. Symptoms can include swelling, coughing, that characteristic lung formation. Now it's, it's, it's hard to mistake. It is literally going to look like a giant growth either right here at the front of the neck and I've even seen them extend upward around the side of the neck sometimes. So they're not always gonna be right here at the base of the neck. Right. Yeah, they're, they're hard to miss. They're very hard to miss. So the goiter can sometimes be attributed to low levels of thyroid hormone. Um, these low levels cause the body to produce more TSH in order to compensate, right? And if the hypothalamus is creating more TSH, or excuse me, I apologize. As the pituitary gland is creating more TSH to send to act on the thyroid, this is now causing more activity in the thyroid and the tissues are not used to this much activity. So all this extra activity is basically going to cause some issues within the tissues and that's how you have goiter formation. And symptoms of a goiter are, like I said, swelling, coughing, that lump forming, changes in your heart rate, your weight, and again, even an inability to tolerate heat or cold. It depends. So now I want to talk about the two main diseases that affect the um, thyroid. Hyperthyroidism and hypothyroidism. Hyperthyroidism is characterized by low TSH levels. This is because the body is going to lower TSH release in response to too much hormone being produced. So basically, when you have hyperthyroidism, the thyroid is pushing out way too much hormone. So now, this is sending a message back to the pituitary gland, and the pituitary gland is going to release less TSH to try and rein the thyroid under control. So when you see someone with low TSH and high hormone levels, T4 levels, that is indicative usually of hyperthyroid. It may present with weight loss, nervousness, 
sweating, goiter formation, and something called exothalamus. And that's where the eyeball kind of protrudes forward. It's hard, it looks almost like someone's in a constant state of surprise. Um, hyperthyroidism can be caused by Graves' disease. That's a very common cause. It's a disease where a small non-cancerous nodule on the thyroid gland can cause overproduction of thyroid hormone. It can also be caused by inflammation of the thyroid, smoking, high stress situation, and it can also be, just be a result of overtreating hypothyroid. So if you have someone who is not producing enough thyroid and we treat it too aggressively, we can actually trigger hyperthyroid. So there's a very delicate balance there. So signs of Graves' disease, which again is a very common cause of hyperthyroid, um, double vision, pressure or pain in your eyes, that eye bulge, and that eye bulge is usually due to fluid buildup called edema behind the eye or within the eye. Um, also, like when the nails start to separate from the nail bed, from the top downward. So you see the top of your nail almost literally look like it's separating from the nail. Um, weight loss, despite an increased appetite. Goiter formation, hand tremors, probably because that heart rate is going up. And then also a very characteristic thick red shin, shin, thick red skin, excuse me, on your shins and the tops of your feet. <laughs> So you wanna, when you see that kind of eye protruding forward in someone, that's usually a telltale sign they should go have their thyroid check because they may have Graves' disease. So now I'm gonna talk about hypothyroidism. That is characterized by high TSH levels and low T4 hormone levels. This is the body's way, again, of trying to compensate. So the thyroid is not putting out enough hormones. So this is sending a message back to the pituitary gland and the pituitary is now going to create all this extra TSH in effort to prompt the thyroid to make more hormone. So hypothyroid can be caused by a few different things like iodine deficiency that I talked about earlier because iodine is necessary for thyroid hormone production. It can also be caused by something called Hashimoto's disease. This is a disease where the immune system actually starts to attack the thyroid gland. And it can also be caused by overtreatment of hyperthyroidism. It's a very delicate balance. We don't want to overtreat one and push you into the other, which can happen in hypo or hyperthyroidism. And then also hypothyroidism, it could just be something you're born with. It could be congenital. Some people are born and they, they just don't produce enough thyroid or their thyroid, they weren't born with it functioning properly. So a lot of different things can cause hypothyroidism. Um, some telltale signs of hypothyroidism also include a slowed metabolism. So maybe you're, you're putting on weight for some reason and nothing about your appetite has changed. Um, you're always tired, constant fatigue, and again, weight gain. So signs of Hashimoto's disease, which is a very common cause of hypothyroid, include increased cold sensitivity. You're always cold, you're not sure why. Again, that goiter formation, you can see the goiter happen in either. So if you see that happening, you definitely need to go have your thyroid check immediately, regardless of what it is. Um, you can also, in Hashimoto's disease, see puffiness of the face and enlarged tongue, like a swollen tongue that's hard to miss. Um, you're always sleepy, sluggish, tired, and you're not sure why, or even constipation. Um, so some of the symptoms that differentiate between hyper and hypothyroid, when you think of hyperthyroid, think of like hyperactivity. The body is working itself too much, right? So your metabolism picks up. So you're losing more weight, you know? Your GI system, it's, it's, it's working, <clears throat> it's a lot more motile. It's moving more than it should be. So diarrhea, um, you're anxious, sweating, nervous. Uh, you can't tolerate heat very often because your body is now producing too much heat. So when you're in a hot environment, you're hot on hot. Um, mood swings, that protrusion of the eye, even heart palpitations. All of that overactivity is a sign of hyperthyroid. And when you measure your TSH levels, when they're over four, let's see, oh, excuse me. <laughs> when your TSH levels, I apologize, when they are low, that is usually a sign of, um, hyperthyroid because your T4 levels are going to be high. 
And then for hypothyroid, think of it as like, it's an underactive thyroid. So you're gonna see things like weight gain because your metabolism is slowed down, constipation because your, your gut's not moving the way it used to, um, you're tired all the time. Again, that goiter formation. You're cold all the time because your body is not producing heat the way it should be. It's not regulating your temperature. Um, tongue swelling, decreased libido, um, and even numbness, tingling, or pain in the hands. Because thyroid exerts some of its effect on the vessels in the body, when you're noticing that like your hands are cold, they're hurting, they're numb, there's probably not enough blood reaching the hands. So that's something to check on. So how do we treat hyperthyroid, the overactive thyroid? Uh, there's two different options. The first one that most clinicians prefer is something called methimazole. So methimazole can take about one to two weeks to see your thyroid hormone levels come down, or excuse me, one to two months. I misspoke, please, I apologize. It can take one to two months to see your thyroid hormone levels come down. Uh, and you wanna talk to your doctor if you start to notice like a net like rash, it's really characteristic. It's gonna look red, raised, you might look like you have welts. It's literally gonna look like someone took a net and held it down over wherever it's happening for a very long period of time. Um, you can also experience joint stiffness or unexplained fever. So if you're having any of these symptoms after starting with themazole, definitely talk to your doctor. It can cause liver issues in those who have pre-existing liver disease. Uh, but these issues can be reversed if they're caught early enough. So, and one last thing that themazole can cause is something called a white blood cell deficiency. So when you see that happen, it's gonna present with like a fever and a sore throat. It doesn't happen often, but it's just something you wanna look out for and something you wanna be in communication with your doctor about. Um, there's another drug called propylthiouracil, but we call it PTU for short because that is a mouthful. Um, this one takes a little bit longer to see a difference in your thyroid hormone levels. It takes four months on average usually to see those levels finally start to come down. Liver functioning should be very closely monitored, especially in those with liver disease. This is a great drug, but the only kind of downside about it is you do have to take this three times a day. So that can be a lot, having to remember to take something three times a day, every single day. Adverse effects of PTU can include itching, rash, a little GI upset, and in serious but rare cases, thickening of the blood vessel walls or a type of drug-induced lupus, which is another autoimmune disease. So this is another one where you just wanna stay in contact with your doctor. Your doctor will probably have you come back when you start the drug every four to six weeks and probably lengthen that out as you stay on the drug just to make sure you're not experiencing any problems and it's working. PTU, I would say methimazole is preferred in hyperthyroid. PTU is really better used in something called thyroid storm. This is a disease state that can happen very suddenly as a result of infection or you know post-op after surgery. And this is when the thyroid is now producing extremely large amounts of hormone. Um, those same symptoms I talked about earlier with hypothyroidism, that nervousness, sweating, if you recently you know, had some type of infection, illness, or something involving your thyroid and you're noticing all these symptoms, I would, go, I, I would go be checked by your doctor just to be sure it's not thyroid storm because PTU is what we use to treat that. Uh, so now how do we treat hypothyroidism? Um, a lot of people probably heard of this drug. The drug I see the most to treat hypothyroid is levothyroxine. That is the generic name of the drug. It also goes by a couple of different brand names like Synthroid, Levoxyl, Unithyroid. So levothyroxine is what we like to call an, a narrow therapeutic index drug or an NTI drug. This means the dose of the drug should not be altered even slightly as it can cause drug levels in your body to go from therapeutic to toxic very easily. So this is not to alarm anyone. This is basically just to make it known before you change brands, like if you normally go pick up one brand of a medication and you go to your pharmacist and you notice this is not the brand I normally pick up, you immediately need to 
talk to your pharmacist and your doctor because that is a decision that should be made between all of you. Brands, dosages, strengths should never be changed without first consulting your doctor. Um, it should be noted, it can take anywhere from three to six months to see symptom improvement. Your doctor is gonna wanna see you back, I think in the beginning, I think six to eight weeks after starting the drug, and then after that, every four to six weeks. And as your thyroid hormone levels start to even out, it's gonna go from every four to six weeks to maybe every three months, every six months, once a year. They're gonna see you less and less as your levels start to even out. So labs may take weeks or months, um, or no, the labs may normalize before your symptoms. So the labs can normalize within a couple of weeks, sometimes maybe a month or two, but it's gonna take a couple of months for those symptoms to start to go away. And it should be noted level thyroxine comes in 12 different strengths. So it's very important to know the color of your pill because each of the 12 strengths comes in a different color. So always, 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 even if you don't remember your strength, remember the color of your pill and try your best to remember the brand name of your pill if you're taking brand name. So you wanna take level thyroxine on an empty stomach about 30 to 60 minutes before eating and never double dose. It is always better to miss a dose than to double dose. Now, let's say if it's been, you're supposed to take it once a day and you usually take it around four o'clock and it's now eight o'clock, you can go ahead and take that. If it has been a full 48 hours, do not take that missed dose. Just go to the next one. But if you've already been taking it a certain kind of way, you know, like you find out after you've already been taking it with food for two months that you're not supposed to take it on an empty stomach, keep taking it how you've been taking it, especially if it's working. You do not want to disturb something that is working. So some alternatives are drugs like Cytomel, Armor, and NP Thyroid but these aren't as great as they're not as strong or stable as level thyroxine and its brand name. So now that we've talked about some of the different treatments for hyper and hypothyroid, I wanna talk about some lifestyle modifications that can help in aiding thyroid health. So of course, healthy diet consisting of veggies, whole grains, and healthy fats, that's very important. This can aid in promoting good thyroid health. Also, a diet high in fiber can add benefit when trying to improve not just thyroid functioning, but whole body health, especially gut health. I feel like we do not talk about the importance of gut health, but that's a different conversation. Um, and adding fiber to your diet can also help in weight maintenance, which can help manage thyroid health. Um, so maintenance of a healthy weight, like I said, can help maintain good thyroid health, but it is understood it may be hard for certain folks to maintain a healthy weight who already struggle with their weight due to thyroid issues. And you wanna make sure you're receiving an adequate amount of iodine in your diet. It didn't take a lot. Most people, the average adult only needs about 150 micrograms, which is equivalent to three quarters of a teaspoon. And you can usually get that from your diet alone. But if you're someone who doesn't use salt or someone who uses kosher salt, because kosher salt does not contain iodine in it, um, it's recommended that you incorporate other things into your diet, such as fish, shellfish, dairy products like milk and cheese, table salt, just a little bit, eggs or chicken to try and get that, that iodine back in your diet because that is key for thyroid health. And that is my talk on thyroid health. Thank you for coming to listen.